Do you, have you seen this folder no, before? No, no, I haven't. I think the person that, um, for obvious reasons, that interests me is Eileen. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And so, you, what you don't know anything at all about it? Okay. I, I know nothing. Okay. I, I've been too interested in myself for too long. Um, well, Granny, Granny brought me up. Right. At the age of five. She Eileen was, did. Yeah. Right. My mother and father divorced. Right. So Granny decided to take me on and look after right. me. Um, so I went to live with her. How did her career begin? She was on the stage. She worked. Right. She must have been about 16, 17, 18. Right. She went to work as a singer. Her father, I think, pushed her into it. Well, right. I say pushed her in. We don't know that for sure. But he was the one that sort of that was signed contracts, apparently. Um, so we presume that was what it was. He we, signed the contracts. Yes, on her, on her behalf. behalf. Yeah, because she was, right. on, I think, 17, 16, something right. like that. And that's so, when it began for her. That's when it began. Um, so this is the contract. Yep. And that is on the 11th of May 1903 mm -hmm. between J.C. Williamson uh, and Simeon. Simeon Lyons. Hmm. Who's the father. He's the father. Right, on behalf of his daughter Eileen. He was a bootmaker. Right. Uh, this engagement to commence on the 16th of May 1903. She will receive at the rate of two pounds £2. per week. Mm -hmm. Wow understood that there will be no payment for matinees. <laughs> I love that. There'll be no payment. I, that gives me an absolute reason to understand why matinees should never exist. Judy also has some newspaper clippings that Eileen herself collected at the time. Miss Eileen Lyons was the most interesting young artist appearing. Little Miss Lyons is just midway in her teens. Her success this afternoon was the more striking in, in as much as she was dressed so poorly and looked such a simple, pathetic figure. But the distinctive item in the musical program was a warbled by Eileen Lyons, a sweet-faced little Jewess. There you go. <laughs> that's, that's, that is it. Um, who looks 14 and is probably not much older. So she was Jewish. Hmm. Well, according to that, From later cuttings, it's clear that by 1907, at the age of 22, Eileen was headlining nightly at the Sydney Opera House. But the furthest the cuttings go is 1915, when Eileen would have been 29 years old. I mean, you don't have massive cuttings, so she, she, she obviously um, didn't Finished reach it up yeah, some stage. Yeah, quite stage. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about no, as to why? No, She never, never, ever mentioned anything about her singing at all. Really? Mm -hmm. So maybe that does suggest... That she was set by the... Yeah. Yeah. Mm, could be. And maybe, you know, she was stopped in her tracks. It was fascinating, you know, because I guess I've probably always felt an affinity more towards my father's um, professional life because I've spent most of my life with him and I've never really explored the other line in my mother's side and that's fascinating it probably goes deeper <laughs> as performers than my dad and that's you know that is really interesting Eileen was just 17 when her father put her on the stage in 1903 Coincidentally, the same age as Jason when he joined the cast of Neighbours. I think the fact that Eileen didn't talk about her career certainly leaves a question unanswered what happened when it looked like it was about to go through the roof. The Princess Theatre is the only venue left in Melbourne where Eileen once performed. Jason's arranged to meet theatre historian Frank Van Stratton to find out more about Eileen's stage career. I'm really looking at a character called Eileen Lyons. Right. She had a contract with J.C. Williamson. I, mean, I guess that's a good place to start. Explain what J.C. Williamson... I mean, is that sort of a, an Andrew Lloyd Webber, Cameron McIntosh? He was the Andrew Lloyd Webber, Cameron his, McIntosh of, his time. of the day right. in Australia. Right. And by the turn of the century, he was controlling the largest theatrical enterprise in this country. Right. And he would put performers under contract and if you were under contract to J.C. Williamson, you were 
you're you taken cool. seriously. Yeah, that's right. A J.C. Williamson show was traditional musical theatre, often featuring Gilbert and Sullivan operettas. And it was this type of highbrow act that Eileen began her career with. But Frank's research shows that she also made a name for herself performing a more populist repertoire on the Tivoli circuit for the impresario Harry Ricards, who promoted an Australian version of vaudeville. Vaudeville was the big popular entertainment of its day. It was, in England, it was called Music Hall. Right. And it was a kind of entertainment that consisted of just a variety of acts, all sorts of acts, singers, dancers, acrobats, animal acts, um, tumblers, magicians, clowns, all sorts of acts, one after the other. This is a typical Picard's program. You look down the names in the first part. And there's Miss Eileen Lyons, Australia's charming soprano. There you go. Wow. Well, she obviously had a, a good career. Mm. If she were working for Williamson's and Rickard, she, were, she was working for the best. It's, and looking through some of the records, you know, she ended her career um, in roughly 1915. I take it she married around about that time. Right. And that usually meant the end of a career for a woman. Right. A few actresses managed to choose a stage career rather than their children, uh, but it wasn't common. The done thing. It wasn't the done thing. Mm. You usually became a homemaker. Records show that in 1913, at the age of 26, Eileen married Horace Dawson, a flamboyant pool hall manager. Two years later, her first daughter was born, which effectively ended her career in 1915. She never mentioned her career beyond that point in time. Well, it may be that did nothing much happened, but it may be that she was disappointed. Right. Because we have uncovered right. from the archives right. an internal memo from the Australian Broadcasting Commission, as it was in those right. days. Right. Eileen Lyons, uh, 11th of August. 1941, that is. This is 1941. Yeah. Following is a report on the audition held on the above artist. Quite good quality, uh, diction fair to good, Rather broad Australian accent <laughs> on occasions. <laughs> Sincere work suggests trial engagement. Grading, B+. <laughs> I can't believe that. Sincere work, Sincere, which, yeah, which, which is better than insincere. <laughs> I've, done a few, I've done a few performances like that, I can tell you, in my time. So this was 1941. 41. Yeah. And uh, whether she ever got on air or not, we don't know. But at least she was trying. Fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely fascinating. So she did try again. She tried again. She yeah. tried again. When Eileen tried to resurrect her career in 1941, she was 55 years old. Her youngest child, Joan, was now an adult, leaving Eileen free to work again. But the following year, her eldest daughter's marriage fell apart and Eileen ended up taking full-time care of her five-year-old grandchild, Judy, Jason's cousin. A woman's place was as a mother and as a keeper of the house, and there is evidence really there to suggest that because of family, that she had to take on that role rather than pursuing her professional career uh, in music. Eileen died in 1976. Um, I'm not sure of when my mother's career particularly began, but I believe probably in the 60s. So there's every reason to suggest that Eileen would have had an influence on my mother in terms of her chosen profession. It's pretty evident that Eileen uh, was addicted to the limelight or wanted to revisit it. I'm beginning to paint the picture that possibly my mother was pursuing a career that her grandmother couldn't fulfill because of her duty as a mum. 